Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial series and today we're going to go over feedback loops and this is quite a fundamental lesson because feedbacks are used quite often in um, a lot of visual art um, because they're quite powerful and um, it's relatively simple otherwise <laughs> it's relatively simple but it can be a little bit elusive at first and a little bit tricky to understand this concept and it's it's kind of similar to, I think we've all heard feedback when, you know, your guitar goes too close to the mic and it's it's feeding back on itself. It's the, the signals are going back into the mic and if it was untethered um, and unrestrained, it would, you know, keep getting louder. The amplitude, amplitude, amplitude <laughs> uh, would keep going up and this can be an infinite loop as we'll see in this episode and... Um, if this didn't have a level top afterwards, it would just be an infinite loop. Um, but it's quite a cool effect, and I thought it would be nice to show you this with um, this mouse in top, uh, mouse in chop. Um, that takes the data from the mouse and puts it on the X, Y axis, and uh, it's very, very fun. Um, we could even use this um, on a connect or, you know, from you know, off a projector and then use the connect. Uh, so our hands could be where the mouse is indicating. Uh, so it's quite a fundamental lesson, this one, because we can build off of this relatively simple um, algorithm. Uh, so to do this, let's uh, delete everything and start again. And let's start with a circle top and set the resolution to 120, um, sorry, 1280 by 720. And then go to the circle parameters and change the size to something small like 0 0.03. And then let's put a null on here. So you can use the Alt N. We're gonna use this as our background. on this little button here for your viewer active um, or display rather and now we are going to basically need a background so we can use a constant top for this um, oh, typo constant here we go and change this to naught 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 on the RGB channels and set the resolution to 1280 by 720 again. I think there is a way of automating this. So if you do know that, please put that down in the comments for everyone. Um, and then we're gonna basically composite this together. We can use a composite, but it's quicker to use an over in this instance, because we're just gonna put the circle literally over the constant. And, oh back inside the base and put that here so we've got our basic circle with a black background and now I think it's um, it's a good point to put our um, mouse in and we're going to need two of these so you can do a copy and paste but for, for the time being we're just going to show um, I'm just going to show you what it's like with one um, because we have this situation that we've got a rectangular canvas and um, this poses a slight problem with the X and Y axis. So we'll show, I'll show you the issue with a math top chop and we need our null. And then for the range, we're gonna put 0 0.9 and leave the two range to 0 and one. Yeah, so with this, you can see the TX and the TY, that represents the X and the Y axis, and then we click Viewer Active, click on the circle, take the TX, put it into the center as a chop reference. Now we've got the X axis, TY, put that into the chop reference for the center, and you can see it's mapped kind of nicely to the X axis, and if we wanted to change its parameters, we, we did it in the math. 
that's where we did from the from range and the two range so you can experiment with that if you've got a different resolution you might have to make some adjustments um, but it's not mapping so nicely to the y-axis you can see it doesn't go to the edge of the display and that's a bit of a problem because we want to maximize our canvas basically Let's just take a sip of coffee It is a uh, first thing in the morning over here, and outside it is a, a beautiful grey overcast day, so perfect for making videos, these conditions. Anyway, um, so we have this mouse in top here, um, chop rather, and put our math top in, oh, I keep on saying that and our null chop. So we only need one parameter on here, so we can delete the ty and that will just give us the x-axis, don't worry about this for now, and, and delete the tx from the, the second chop. On the math chop for the second channel, this, the range is the same, the from range but the two range excuse me we can set to zero and two and all it needs is just re-referencing and we'll pop that in here chop reference and now we can see it's pretty damn near perfect in the match I mean you can dial it in if you so wished but I think this is good for the purposes of this demonstration and it would be nice if we could, you know, change the color of this according to the the mouse x y parameters, uh, co coordinates rather. Um, so we can do this in a similar fashion to referencing. We can just go chop reference to the fill color, and that's going to automate the color of this. And I think that's pretty pretty neat. Um, so we've got this ball that sort of changes. So now we, we can go ahead and create our feedback loop. So in order for a feedback loop, for a basic type of feedback, and I think this is quite good showing you this with a basic algorithm so that things don't get too complicated, um, we insert the feedback here, and we also need to composite this because we've got this feedback channel here, and we've got our circle here that's been moving that is moving around um, so we want to composite these two things together so that we have a clear ball on top of a feedback loop and let's click add like this and then in order to create the feedback loop we want to bring this composite and put that inside the feedback. So now you can see that each frame, when I move around with my mouse, you can see that it's basically an infinite loop that stays there, it's never gonna go. Um, so this would be similar to how, you know, on the guitar, it just gets louder and louder and louder because all this information is just building up on top of each other. So to do this, we need to change our levels. So, or adjust the level. So let's insert a, a level. Go over to the post on the opacity. We want to change this to something slightly smaller, like a 0 point a 0 0.95, so that there's a tail off here and the opacity of each of these objects is subtracting itself as it goes through the animation. So that's why it, you know, it subtracts itself until it becomes zero. Um, but we want this nice and smooth. We can blur this out by using a blur tool. There we go. Nice and simple. And now it's blurring out almost like a spray can. You change the filter size a bit. You can experiment with this to get the effect that you want, but all we need to do is just raise the filter size and hey presto, we've got our basic feedback loop and 
like I say, we, this is just a fundamental lesson just to get the basic idea of what feedback is doing. Um, I think it's nice to break things down without getting too complicated. Um, and in future lessons, um, I'm going to explore how we can use this in different applications, like using the Connect um, with projectors, um, maybe two input dots, you know, with our hands maybe wavering around on, on, on a wall. Um, because my ultimate goal here is to create audiovisual <clears throat> immersive experiences. So um, I think this is quite a, a good lesson to, to solve this problem of, you know, how can we make something move using feedback with a simple mouse input. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any comments on this video, please leave them below. And make sure you like and subscribe. It helps grow this channel. It helps support me um, so I can keep making these videos for you. And yeah, more, more videos to come. My channel is, is brand new. So um, do show your support and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.